Welcome to another session of VFD Basics. This session will cover the F05 DC bus over voltage faults common to many Rockwell AC drives. I am Bruce Wagner, Power Technical Consultant for Arkansas, as part of the CED Central Industrial Division. The F05 throws when the DC bus has risen to a point to cause a fault. The fault is to prevent component failures such as DC bus capacitors and other items on the power section. It is one of the most common faults seen on AC drives, and it has many root causes. They may be singular or additive to reach a trip point. Solutions for the F05 fault range from parameter changes to adding additional hardware. Application overviews, examples, and solutions presented are done so from a high level view. There can be other items that play into the situation that for brevity are not covered at this time. The assumption is, is that your situation does not allow use of an increased overspeed limit to run the drive faster, to burn off the excess energy, Though that is an option if your situation allows such, contact your local CED drives technical consultant for further details if needed. The top reasons that I see for the F05 fault presentation and installation are regeneration or an overhauling load. The load is turning the rotor faster than the drive field out to the stator is running. Regeneration cyclical loading, typical of presses and things of that nature where you have multiple recycle or regeneration points in a rotation. Power line rises caused by AC line side increases from several sources. Power factor correction capacitors, which add to voltage whenever the utility or the facility turn on more capacitance than is needed to correct the line. Motor winding insulation and or motor lead insulation breakdowns can cause these due to the reflected wave phenomena. DC bus component generation or component degradation allows uh, less absorption of energy back to the drive causing the trip point to be reached sooner. And improper MOV jumper arrangement for the power system type can add a ground and or common mode noise component back into the drive bus through that path that causes the DC bus voltage to rise. In regeneration or an overhauling load, the load physics do not allow the load to slow as fast as the drive can reduce the output speed frequency. Example, the drive changes speed from 60 to 40 hertz. Drive decel ramp is at 10 seconds or six hertz a second so we can make the speed step change in about 3.33 seconds. Load physics are such that it changes at three hertz a second or it needs 6.66 seconds to get to 40 hertz speed. Therefore, drive output is slowing faster than load. Load is now pushing the motor rotor, which is overhauling the drive output. Motor becomes a generator and that energy is returned to the drive DC bus as regeneration. There are several possible solutions. First of which is extend the decel time uh, ramp to allow the drive to absorb more of the returned energy. Had an output reactor that may provide enough voltage dampening for a low level regen. Had an external dynamic brake resistor to burn that excess energy off as heat if process time does not allow extended ramp times. Or use a regenerative drive such as the PowerFlex 755TR, which does not require an external resistor. Regeneration of cyclical loads. Load is constantly oscillating between high current and low current demands. Typical of planer heads and sawmills or bull wheels on presses. Again, physics does not allow it to slow as fast as the drive can reduce output speed frequency. For example, a planer head runs low current when not in contact with wood. At contact with the wood, the current spikes to maintain torque speed. When the wood exits the planer head, current drops, but speed increases so that it now overhauls the drive output speed. Speed regulator clamps to control the drive output speed and motor, so a cyclical regeneration occurs. The cycle is variable, so there may not be time for drive to absorb or dissipate the energy. DC bus can continually build until it reaches the trip point. Again, possible solutions are extend the decel ramp may allow drive time to absorb the returned energy, but typically it's not enough due to the repeating cycle and short time orders. An output reactor may provide enough voltage dampening at a low reach in level. An external dynamic brake resistor typically required. Duty cycle of drive brake transistor and brake resistor are critical points size appropriately or again, use a regenerative drive, which does not require an external resistor and returns the energy to the AC line. Power line rises contributes to the fault occurring, typically in conjunction with another cause. Power line rises builds the drive DC bus voltage above nominal. It reduces the delta between the bus operating voltage to trip point. Therefore, it reduces the amount of energy that the drive can absorb or dissipate. For example, at 480 volts AC, drive DC bus is around 675 volts DC. Regeneration in the install builds a DC bus up to around 790 volts DC periodically. Drive does not trip. 
power line rises to 492 VAC though, and the DC bus nominal rises to 695. During the next regen cycle, the combination of the rise in the line voltage with the regen energy voltage builds the DC bus to the trip point on a 480 volt drive of 800, 810 volts DC. Power lines that are sustained at high levels are problematic when using a dynamic brake resistor. The situation needs to be examined closely for proper application. An example is, is that at 480 volts, the drive DC bus is around 675 DC. At 525 to 530 volts AC sustained, the drive bus voltage is around 750 volts DC. Dynamic brake transistors or external choppers typically fire at 750 volts DC. At that point, the brake resistor is being exercised at 100% on time. Transistors, choppers, and resistors must be sized for this duty cycle or other steps taken to prevent this occurrence. Possible solution to power line rises are extend the D-cell ramp again. Reactors are either input or output or a combination of both correctly applied may prevent, provide sufficient voltage dampening to avert the issue. A reactor typically drops the output voltage from its terminals by approximately its percentage of impedance if properly loaded. Again, it is dependent on the level of rise and the time of the rise. External dynamic brake resistor may be required, but again, the duty cycle of the brake transistor and brake resistor are critical points, and they must be sized appropriately to deal with this constant on time. A regenerative drive does not require the external resistor and would return the, uh, the power back to the AC line, which again requires application considerations due to the design and install of the complete uh, process. Power factor correction capacitors can also cause issues. They exhibit similar characteristics to power line rises, except they are on a cyclical basis as the power factor correction capacitors are switched off and on based on plant or power bus loading. Distance from the power factor correction capacitor to drive affect the level of influence that they have on the drive and the install. Power factor correction capacitors can also be influenced by the drive's demand for power based on the distance between the devices. The PFCCs can become the main power feeding the drive and the six pulse harmonic of the drive front end erodes the PFCC fuses. This causes premature failure of these uh, capacitor protection devices. Possible solutions. Again, we go back to extend the D-cell ramp time. Again, we go back to reactors, input and or output. And in this case, input may be more appropriate because it provides impedance between the power factor correction capacitor output and the input of the drive, thus slowing down the rate of rise on those voltages, uh, oscillations that the drive front end can see and convert into DC bus energy. And the external dynamic brake resistor may be required, but again, application considerations have to be noted. If the power cycle is often enough, this thing can push up into the duty cycle ranges that are very high for the resistor and the transistor. And again, possibly use a regenerative drive, but more application considerations are needed because of the interaction of the active front end of the regenerative drive to the power factor correction capacitors in the system. Motor winding or motor lead insulation breakdown can also cause this issue. This situation plays into the phenomena of reflected wave. Reflected wave is exhibited by all IGBT output type drives. And what occurs here is as the motor or motor leads go into breakdown, they cause an increase in the amount of reflected wave voltage seen at the output terminals of the drive. There are blocking diodes around the IGBT output transistors of the drive to help prevent huge power surges from the load side that can cause IGBT damage. These blocking diodes transmit some of this reflected wave voltage into the drive DC bus, therefore causing the DC bus voltage to rise to some value. The damage is sufficient on the motor winding insulation and or motor lead insulation. The spikes could be of such magnitude that the drive will trip almost as soon as the start button is pushed and the transistor start heating. Possible solutions, and these are only band-aids, or motor or leads are going to fail at some point. How catastrophic becomes the question. Motor and or lead failure can cause drive failure. The drive tries to protect itself, but sometimes it is such a hard bolted short that the output transistors high pot and blow or fail. Again, using the D-cell ramp may provide some capability here. An output reactor, when correctly applied, may provide sufficient voltage dampening for a period of time. 
The output reactor will dampen the energy surge that will occur when the motor fails. This dampening may allow the drive enough time to read through its diagnostics, see that an increase is or rise is happening, and put itself into an overvoltage, overload, overcurrent, or ground fault trip to protect the drive itself. An external dynamic brake resistor may be used to some extent. Once it reaches a certain point, again, application considerations have to be taken into account. And if the breakdown is advanced far enough, you still have the possibility of current high potting the output transistors on a hard fault. Drive DC bus component deg degradation. The DC bus of a VFD essentially consists of the DC bus capacitors along with bleeder balance resistors to keep the voltage across the capacitors balanced and to bleed off the energy from the capacitors per code requirements, uh, whether it's UL, NEMA, et cetera, that the voltage has to be reduced to a certain value in a short order of time for safety purposes. The amount of energy the VFD DC bus can absorb or dissipate is related to the amount of the capacitance in the DC bus and the value of the bleeder balance resistors. Erosion of the value of either of these components reduces the amount of energy the bus can absorb or dissipate, thus a drive that may work when new trips as it ages. Erosion of these components is related to the amount of damage done to the items from line side disturbances, voltage spikes, lightning strikes, etc., and load side issues such as ground faults, motor overloads, instantaneous hardware overcurrents, high duty cyclical loading of undersized drives, etc., including lightning on the load side that may strike the metal frame mounting of the motor and return up the motor leads. Essentially, these components can degrade from anything that hits the DC bus at some point. Possible solutions, again, these are band-aids that have to be used temporarily with the ultimate solution being fixing the issue. While these possible solutions can extend the amount of time to run the existing VFD, that amount of time is indeterminate. Again, we use the tried and true extension of D-cell RAM. Again, we use input or output reactors. And again, we use an external dynamic brake resistor, remembering that application has to be examined and checked for duty cycle levels. The permanent solution is to address the situation that caused the drive damage, replace the drive, and if it's application oriented, such as high duty cycle, uh, cyclical loading, replace with the proper size drive needed in order to sustain the application's requirements. The improper MOV jumper arrangement for power system type is a subtle cause of this situation. It mostly occurs on ungrounded power system feeds to the drive. You need to refer to the specific drive installation manual for proper arrangement of the MOV jumpers based on your specific power system feed. Example, power system feed to the drive is classified as an ungrounded type, such as delta, impedance grounded Y, etc. MOV jumpers are left installed in the drive. For RA install instructions, the MOV jumper should have been removed. What is seen in these situations is that there are there is circulating ground energy at some level in these top power feed systems. This circulating ground energy travels through the MOV jumper back into the DC bus, helping cause a voltage rise. Usually it's not enough on its own to cause a drive trip, but in some cases, yes it is. It is usually additive to one of the other causes and the propensity for a trip increases dramatically when they start combining. In addition to this, these type noises coming back into the drive can cause additional issues with analog loops, communications, etc. The solution? Obtain the specific drive install manual and position MOV jumpers per the type power feed system to which the drive is connected. In summary, the FO5 DC bus overvoltage fault is thrown when the DC bus voltage reaches the trip point. Trip point voltage varies based on the input voltage rating of the specific VFD. DC bus monitor regulator cannot distinguish which of these causes built the DC bus to trip point. Therefore, there is no selectivity to ignore a specific cause. The causes can be singular or additive, i.e. multiple causes at the same time. And in the end, they all meet in the middle at the DC bus, rising the DC bus voltage level. This is a diagram showing how the DC bus is in the middle of the variable frequency drive, VFD, and how both line and load side connections can contribute to issues in those situations. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. And if you have more questions, please contact your local CED technical consultant for power and drives. And they will be happy to assist you in trying to resolve the issues that you see from the FO5 overvoltage fault.